I was joking with them if they were going to get loud or not. That is very loud. It is a Friday. we got a Friday vibe. we got a lot to celebrate because we're about to be joined on stage by a platinum-selling superstar who's highly anticipated st uh, sophomore studio album and feature-length film, K-12, through is out and available everywhere today. Let's get him louder right now for Melanie Martinez. <laughs> When I'm old and gray and deaf, I will think of build. All right, now, before Melanie uh, gets out on stage, let's check out the trailer for K-12 if you haven't seen it already. We're listening. Melanie Martinez is here. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. How are your ears? I mean, you must, you get that everywhere you go. I mean, are they okay? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, oh, my ears so are loud. fine. So oh, loud. yeah. I mean, I listen to music pretty loud, so, yeah. Totally. Melanie's like, my ears. Oh, my God, are my ears showing? What's, what's wrong? Uh, but I, I, I'm almost like ex honored to be in your presence today because I, I read on your Instagram story last night, or I think you posted it today, that last night was the most special night of your life. Yeah. So I feel like this is very special energy to be around you right I'm, now. I'm just so grateful. I have no words, honestly. Like, I just cried tears of joy just, like, reading people's responses to the film. I'm, like, blown away. I can't even express honestly my heart is so full it's like it's crazy I can't. it's insane and i know i know to you the highest accolade or achievement that you can make in music is to help people heal and i have to imagine the coolest thing for you of course the reviews are fantastic but the communities that are being fostered within these music uh, movie theaters it's incredible me. um a lot of people were saying that the energy was just so different than any time they've ever stepped into a theater like there was just a sense of community and like togetherness and just like so much love um um, and I think that that's all I could ever dream of creating, you know, that kind of environment is so special. Totally. And it's funny, like, I'm, I'm really happy that you on your story were like, yo, like, say what's up to people, like, introduce yourself. Because it's something that, I, I don't know, like, you know, we're all a little shy, right, yeah. at concerts. But if you think about it, what a great place to meet your new best friend. Totally. Right? You're all Absolutely. in the same place for the very same reasons. Yeah. I'm pretty introverted, so I know what it's like. Um, and I know that if anybody resonates with my music, they're probably an introvert, I would assume. Right. <laughs> so um, it's really difficult making friends, especially uh, just with strangers, you know what I mean? But I think that that was kind of the difference in these theaters it was like it didn't feel like it was strangers it felt like it was like a family which totally really and it probably sweet. felt incredibly safe definitely yeah yeah sure. it's funny you know uh you say you're an introvert but then when it comes to uh, works of art like you just i feel like you just let it all out mm -hmm. when did you realize that that's really was your outlet music i mean of course now film and just visuals um, I started writing poetry when I was really young, and then I kind of translated that into writing music when I taught myself how to play guitar uh, at like 14. But I was really into photography, so I think that my interest in visual arts and photography mixed with my interest in music, I was just like, naturally, these two fit really well together for me. Right. Yeah. What is it about it, though? Is it almost like it's the permission to express yourself that you need as an artist? Like, like why, why do you find yourself more uh, introverted personally? I don't know why I'm an introvert. I think I'm stepping into myself more. I would say that I'm more of like an ambivert now. Okay. <laughs> where I'm like, you know, finding the balance yeah, in between. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> um, it's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. But um, I don't know. Um, yeah, it was, I think that it's just important for me to make visuals that can tell the story of what I'm trying to express in the song. Yeah. Um, and just creating in general is so cathartic for me. So I love it all. I love creating in any, you know, art form. Yeah, you're so passionate about the process from taking something inside of your brain and what you're seeing, right, mm -hmm. uh, internally, and then making sure it looks just like that and sounds just like that for the outside world. Yeah. It's something that is often not talked about, how hard that is. You can describe a, a vibe to a producer, it's so you difficult. know. Yeah, and it's, it's like, so oh, difficult. it's close, but it's not it. Yeah. How did this measure up? Because this looks so fantastic, but in your mind, the end product, how did it measure up? Um, I think this is the closest I've been able to execute a project, uh, you know, closely to what it is that I see in my brain. So with all the music videos, it was definitely a struggle trying to match up to what it is that I wanted to create. Um, and with this, this is the closest that I've ever came to actually seeing that through. So I'm beyond thrilled. Like I said, I just I can't even believe it's real and here right now. I think it's so exciting to hear as, as we have fans of yours just surrounding us here in studio today and people watching at home is to me now what I hear when you say that this is the closest thing to your vision. This is the closest uh, we've ever gotten to inside Melanie yes. Martinez's mind. Definitely. Right. Sure. And there's an intimacy to that. Definitely. That's yeah. so cool. What were the, like the um, 
we'll get into how you wrote this album because from a music standpoint, it's so it's uh, something I've never heard about before. But uh, from a visual standpoint, what were the first visuals or visions that entered your mind when thinking about the film? I think that the visuals started to happen as I was writing each song, which kind of happens to me in general. So like. Okay. Um, the oldest songs that I remember writing were Strawberry Shortcake, Lunchbox Friends, and Class Fight. Those are the three that happened late 2015, early 2016. So I've been sitting on this music for a while. Well, the um, album was done in 2017, right? Yeah, so early 2017 I finished it, and then summer of 2017 I started writing the film, uh, and I finished it 2018 early, and then they were like, the budget is too high, we need to make revisions. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make revisions, and spent months doing that, and had a month of pre-production in LA, a month of pre-production in Budapest, uh, and then we shot for 31 days, which was really intense and wow. incredible. Who, where do you start? Because you've never done anything like a feature-length film, and you did everything, if, if you don't know watching right now, wrote, directed, costume starred, design, costume yeah. design. You ran the uh, arts and crafts section, too, you know, crafts and food. No, but seriously, <laughs> like, you had your hands on, on every aspect of this production. When you've never done that before, where do you begin? Like, where is literally step one? Um, you just go for it. You just take a leap of faith. Um, I had so many doubts within myself and I'm just lucky to have had the label supporting me and encouraging me um, and my family and my friends just being like, you absolutely can do this um, throughout the whole process. If I didn't have them, I don't know, you know, it probably would have taken longer, but yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely a process. There was a lot of learning curves. So I would say that if there's anyone who's like watching who, um, you know, wants to try to pursue anything in their life, you know, um, but is too scared to go for it, I would say just go for it because it can really lead to somewhere incredible and you could surprise yourself. Oh, yeah. It's often what happens, right, when you yeah. face your fear? Definitely. You surprise yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. it's you're, you're that sort of, like, beacon of light, I feel like, to so many of your fans, and you're that source of inspiration, you know, like, as you just said. Who is that for you, though? You talk about fr friends and family, but specifically, like, who is the person that always just says, Melanie, go for it? Um, or maybe the first person to do it. I mean, I have, like, four main like really close best friends that I, I live with that are just like incredible but also my family my parents have been so supportive since I was really young um without them I probably wouldn't have even made crybaby you know what I mean um to have encouraging parents uh just being like yeah go ahead like right until four in the morning you know and uh we don't care if we can't sleep because we hear you playing your guitar really loud on the amp you know what I mean like they don't they were just like, go for it, and if I didn't have that, I don't know where I would be, so I'm super grateful for them. That's amazing. I want to get back to last night really quick and just how special this must have been for you. Did it, did it taking place in the premiere, of course, I'm talking about, of the film, did it taking place in New York, did it add to, to the feelings, just that you being from here? Yeah, I haven't been here in a while, too, so I think just being back in New York, that energy was, like, it was... Um, just really special. I, I have really no words to explain last night or even the LA premiere. I think that just seeing the energy, seeing people um, just showing up and being so passionate about it. I mean, people were getting like tattoos and the album hadn't even came out yet. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's so insane to me. I'm just like, I can't even believe it. I'm. It's a weird <sighs> feeling when you see the tattoos, right? Because you're, I mean, you're so, you're, you're grateful, but then you're probably also no, like, I'm oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, it's, you know, it's their body. You know what I mean? Right. Like, do what you want with your body. I, I think, um, I just think it's really special and I'm, I'm just blown away. I don't even, yeah. Do we have that uh, the picture from Melanie's uh, Instagram story? Because I thought this was so cool and really speaks to just the quality of this film. Is This is, of course, your film alongside some of the biggest films out right now. It, the sequel, and then, of course, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, I, it's just, it, it, this is going to sound so silly to say, but it's like, it's incredible. It, like, really, like, you know, because sometimes you artists these days, you're very creative with rollouts and whatnot, and you'll you'll have visual, uh, you know, accompaniments and whatever, you know, the, the word of the day is. This is a movie, man. Like, this is... And I, the, the inspiration, you know, I get Tim Burton vibes, maybe a little like Wes Anderson, you know, I could be projecting that, but no, no, where, where do you borrow from for these? Um, I love Tim Burton, for sure, um, and Wes Anderson. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of classic movies, so if you name, like, a classic film, probably haven't seen it, but yeah. I love Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice. Totally. And, um, I also love, you know, surrealist kind of art and film um, as well, so I'm into all of the magical 
whimsical stuff. Yeah. No, and this certainly is right in line with all that stuff. Um, let's just talk set challenges, right? Because it came out so beautiful, but it, there had to be hardships along the way. Yeah. What were some set challenges? Um, I think the all the learning curves. So I had never written a feature film before. I had obviously written like music video treatments, which is very different than writing uh, a whole script with dialogue and characters. And I was I had to think about all the details, you know, and figure out, okay, what's this character's sun, moon, and rising sign, you know? Like, how do I figure out how uh, they would, you know, uh, talk in a conversation with this character? You know, how, how would their back and forth be? And so, and it was really interesting, the casting process was so incredible too. I met really amazing friends, um, and you know, I would, like for example, Floor, I wrote um, Floor to be a Pisces, and the girl that I casted for Floor is a Pisces. So it's like things like that that are just so serendipitous and magical. Um, I just think it was all kind of like just destiny, um, yeah. I love that you took it that deep, because I was reading you did, yeah. you know, astrological signs yeah. and whatnot. Um, did you find that just writing for other people and, and different personality types, was it an exercise in empathy for you? I think that everything and everything I do, I try to create exercises for empathy. It's good to put yourself in other people's shoes. So even with like making my music and my art, like I said, like my main goal is to like even since I was like 14 and I first started writing music, I just knew for a fact that like it was my purpose in life to try to create music and art that can help people heal or that can be used as some form of therapy because that's that's what music and art has done for me throughout my life. So yeah, let's talk about the music. Yeah. Right. Is it true that you 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 came up with the title and then built everything else around that title? Yes. So it was like the theme came first. I knew that I wanted Crybaby to go to school. I was like, this has to happen. It's like the perfect follow up. Um, and I just started writing down a bunch of different titles that would fit that theme. Uh, and I would go into the studio and me and Mikey would go through all these sounds and we would just find sounds that would closely fit the titles that I had written down and to try to give more of, or at least like trigger more of a visual when you're listening to it, you know? Like for example, show and tell, they're like we put in those like cranks, you know, cause I knew for sure that I wanted uh, to be in a marionette, like this like doll box, you know? So I had those early visions of the film and I was able to like um, pick out sounds that fit that best. Yeah. You had the titles of all the tracks before you heard any music. Yeah, I just write down titles first. Really? Yeah. You've always done that or just for this Even project? for Crybaby, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So then you, when you hear a sound or someone plays you an instrumental, you go, oh, that's, oh, that's that. Exactly. That's interesting. So did you did you fall in love with music through music video first as a kid? No, actually, I hadn't seen a lot of music videos when I was a kid. Um, I was just purely obsessed with music. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you, ever, uh, do you ever like think like why you're attracted to certain sounds at different points in your life? Because I know, I think like uh, in correct me if I'm wrong here, but you cycled through a lot, and then whatever stuck is what wound up on the album. Um, yeah. I mean, the sound. I think it grows as you grow. You know, as artists, I think you could even tell like the progression of the sound sonically. Uh, and the instruments that we use as artists or, or pick out, it's all based off of the reflection of where we are at that current moment in our life. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, if, I guess if, if you don't know, you didn't get it from the trailer or talk so far, it's really about, you know, your character going off to this really kind of messed up sleepaway school, mm -hmm. but under this huge, you know, grandiose facade. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a great analogy for just so many things in life. Like, I just, I immediately thought of the music industry Definitely. as one. There's so many double meaning, yeah, things. Right. A lot. A triple meaning, even. Was there a prevailing, uh, you know, analogy that you thought of? Um, or parallel, rather? Yeah, I could definitely name a couple. So, um... I wrote, okay, so I wrote Detention when I was on tour, and I kind of felt like I was, and I, and this is a hard subject to talk about, especially in front of, like, you know, people who listen to my music. Obviously, it's, uh, as an artist, it's really hard to talk about when you feel uncomfortable with um, being put in the spotlight or just a lot of attention on you, because as an artist, my main goal, again, I just want to make music, may art, make art, express myself, hopefully help other people in that process. And so when you're put on a pedestal and you kind of feel like you're being treated like a doll or like, you know, you have to just like, you're there to just entertain and you're not a human and you don't have emotions, you're not allowed to have bad days or, 
uh, you know, like there's those kind of feelings that I think that we kind of try to put away as artists because we're scared of like what other people think. We're scared that people are going to think maybe she's ungrateful, which I'm super grateful, <laughs> you know, I'm like beyond grateful. My life is, I don't even understand it, you know, it's like a dream. Um, but I think it's important to talk about these things because um, it's good for that exercise of empathy, you know. Right. Do you ever, do you ever want to or feel the need to to distance yourself from the art in terms of you'd love the attention on the art, yeah. maybe less on you yes. sometimes. Yes, that, yeah. very much that. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, which is tough when your name is Melanie Martinez and that's the artist name, right? Totally, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you because, uh, you know, it's been, what, I guess, it's four years since Crybaby? Yeah. Yeah, time's flying, we're getting old. Um, but you think of K through 12, and that's such a transformative time period. We're literally, you're going to school, we're learning how to interact with others, we're, we're becoming who we probably will be for the majority of our lives. How how is that compared to the the transformation in your own life since Crybaby, Crybaby, excuse me, first came out? Um, I think that my confidence has really changed. That's like the one thing that I really see very clearly um, when I look back at the past and like um, even just the process. Like before I even went out to Budapest to shoot the film, um, I really grew a lot uh, with my confidence, whether it be in dancing, directing, um, and I found that you know, through trying to gain confidence in dancing, which was a very new thing for me, I was able to uh, put that energy and that confidence into directing and finding my voice on set and, um, you know, like standing up for my vision and making sure that I wasn't being walked all over. Yeah. Yeah. Can you offer any advice to that? Because I think it's something that a lot of young artists, they struggle with. And it's something that when you imagine uh, a pursuit of music, you don't necessarily think about, but, you know, knowing that you know what's best for yourself, right. right? You can be young and you can be in a studio with older people and they might be saying, no, 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 this is the sound. No, 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 you're wrong. This is the lyric. Mm -hmm. And a lot of artists, unfortunately, they get lost along the way because of things like that. So like, what advice would you give a young artist in terms of just standing up for your vision? I mean, if you have a strong vision and you know it for a fact, you're like, this is what it, what it is that I'm trying to create. And you, um, you know, hire people to come on board to help you execute that vision. Don't ever let anyone... Um, you know, make you compromise on what it is that you see in your head because it's very important um, and cathartic to be able to have that full expression of like, this is here and now it's here down on paper or on film or on a canvas, you know? Um, it's just so important for your soul, I think, more than anything. So just go for it and uh, just don't let people walk all over you. It's really important, yeah. Yeah, totally. Let's get some fan questions. Speaking of fans, uh, the first is going to come from over here. What's your name? Hi, Molly. Hi. I'm George. I nice was wondering, was it harder um, directing a film than a music video? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think just the length alone, you know what I mean? It being like all of it at once as opposed to like, okay, now I'm just doing Mrs. Potato Head. Now I'm just doing Mad Hatter, you know? Like, yeah. uh, it was more like singularly focused on one song and, you know, it would be like a three-day shoot. Like, Mad Hatter would think was like a three-day shoot. Like, this is like a 31-day shoot, you know? It was like really intense. Uh, I was like waking up at like three in the morning and coming back really late. Um, it was really, really intense, but so worth it, yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, next one is gonna come from uh, just behind him. Hi. <laughs> Um, I've been a fan since, like, I remember the exact day I became a fan. It was January 2nd, 2015. Oh. Yeah, I was in a car on a road trip, so you kind of got me through that. 24-hour road trip. Um, my oh, question that's a long is, one. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question is, what was your favorite song to write, and what inspired it? Ooh. Um, that's a really good question. I think I have... I have a favorite song, but I don't know if it was, maybe it was my favorite song to write. I think Nurse's Office is my favorite song. It was definitely my favorite song to write because it, it just came so naturally. It was much more intuitive than the other songs. Um, it just happened so quickly. It felt like a blur, almost like an out-of-body experience. And then afterwards, I was like, me and Mikey looked at each other and were like, did we just make this right now? Like, this just happened. So sometimes that happens to me, but that one was like the most significant uh, experience, yeah. What was the hardest song to write? Because you, I mean, you tackle some some you know heavy topics here, be it bulimia or mm -hmm. anxiety, social pressures, that sort of thing. I think the hardest song to write. Wow, that's a good one. I don't know if I could recall like a super tough one to write. There might be like 
one that I had to like go back. I think maybe Class Fight was one that early on it had like different, there was different versions of it. Um, I redid the chorus, you know, which I never do. Um, I'm usually like, this is what it is. You know, I'll do the vocals that day and then I'm like, I'm keeping it like this. I don't want to touch it, you know? Cause you can't really like recreate that um, feeling when you're singing and recording and writing. So, but that song was one I came back to. Yeah. Do you ever go back to songs and, and, and redo lyrics at times because you feel like you weren't as uh, yeah, open? With class or fight, yeah, with Class Fight I did that. Yeah. I was like, I just felt like I could do better. I was like, right. this this just isn't strong enough. I feel like, um, I just felt like I could do better. So I. What does better mean though? Like, like, is it more honest? It's just, it just, it's just more in my head. I have no idea what, what better is. It's like yeah. to me, you know, like yeah, yeah. melodically, I guess, lyrically, you know, if I feel like the lyrics are not wordy enough or they're not clever enough, then I'm like, I could challenge myself and push myself to make something better than this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, there's another one from right behind me. What's your name? Hi, my name Hi. is Caesar. Uh, you've helped me go through so much, and I love you so much oh, for I that. I love you too. Thank you so much for that. Uh, my question is, um, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> me too, trust yeah. me. <laughs> um, what is the song do you, that you relate to the most, and why? Um, I think that, wow. Mm, there's so many. I think the ones that I relate to the most and the ones that were more personal were show and tell and detention, for sure. Um, just because as an artist, like expressing that sentiment was really hard for me. So I'm just happy that I was able to like put it out there, express myself. It was very cathartic for me, but yeah, show and tell and detention. Yeah. Great. Awesome question, dude. Yeah. Uh, and then we have time for one more they're telling me, and it's going to come from over here. What's your name? Hi, I'm Sarah. We nervous. Um, so um, I just want to say, like, I've been a fan of you since, like, ninth grade, and now I'm a sophomore in college, so, like, it's crazy. Oh, you wow. Mean, you, <laughs> you mean a lot to me, and I just wanted to know what your fans mean to you. Uh, everything. Like, everything in the whole entire world. Uh, literally, I don't know any other meaning or purpose in my life but to, like, create music and art for, like, other people who resonate with that, you know? I, I don't, it's literally all I think about at every moment of the day, just like the people who are supporting me, who are just f feel like such a deep connection to it and are expressing that um, through just paragraphs and essays and just reading all of it and sobbing in my hotel room, just, you know, like tears of joy really because it's just, I don't, I can't explain it. It's just the, it's, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, well, I, this went by so impossibly fast, Melanie, but thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for I, having me. I want to make sure I get the details right in terms of how we can uh, watch the film, right? Because there is the theatrical release, but then, of mm -hmm. course, uh, streaming is also available. So what's, yeah. what is the, the way to do it? Um, I believe that it's going to be on Amazon, iTunes. You could get it on iTunes. It'll be just like the full album, and then the film will be paired with it as well. So you nice. can... Go watch it, yeah. check it out. Yeah. yeah, and you can stream the album. I was on Dude on Spotify earlier, and there's so many cool vertical videos. Yeah. And it's, even that's immersive. So, guys, one more time for Melanie Martinez. Thank you so much. <laughs>